all right, got a very interesting story out of Canada here. Apparently some Hindu internet trolls were harassing some Canadian academics who were criticizing uh, Hindu extremism, and my cat just moved my camera. You know, bear with me on that. The cat is wanting attention of some kind. But anyway, so some Hindu internet trolls were harassing these Canadian academics for criticizing Hindu extremism. I have to do this video quickly as I can because my cat wants me to give him attention. But gonna read the article. It says here on CBC News, hate speech and death threats. Canadian academics harassed after criticizing Hindu nationalism in India. Academics receive online hate from local dysphoria groups and foreign trolls. Why? For criticizing Hindu extremism. Not any different than the Muslims, how the Muslims will behave, but they have a lot in common. When you really get down to it, they have a lot in common. But continuing on in the article, it says, on the CBC News article, Chenyam Jangam, I'm probably not saying that right, but opened his computer and saw a, cartoo a cartoon of himself cleaning a white person's boots. The history professor at Carlson University in Ottawa said he received thousands of hateful emails like this over the past five years, along with abusive voicemails on his office phone. He said he has been accosted in person by groups picketing his academic lectures because they disagree with his politics. Quote, imagine every Monday you get up and see that picture, said Jangam. Half your, quote, half your day will go can, uh, coming to terms with it. He closed most of his social media accounts in response, in part, he said to try to shield his family. Yeah, because again, the Hindu nationalists, the Hindu, the Hindus in general, because the Hindu extremists are not extremists. They're just Hindus. Just like the Muslim extremists are not extremists. They're just Muslims. They're just being true to their, their uh, political ideology which is what Hinduism is, but continuing on. But this, this is how they respond. They have this Islamic type response to their critics. But it says, Jangam is one of several Canadian academics whose work relates to India, who say they are being harassed and threatened by a dysphoria of groups who are both critic, who are critical for being critical of both the country's politics under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling Bharata Janata Party. I'm not saying that right, but and Hindutva, the right wing political ideology it, it espouses. Quote, there is a growing violence against Muslims and Dalits, said Jangam, who is Dalit, the lowest sar sar strata. Am I saying that right? If anyone who's Indian watching this, just correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, uh, if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, of the Hindu caste system, it is a group previously called untouchables because of their low status meant they weren't even touched by others. Quote, I come from that background and have a social responsibility as do a moral responsibility to speak out, unquote. Yeah, and he has, he's getting these Hindus giving him an Islamic type response. Stephen Zhao, former researcher with the Canadian Anti-Hate Network, who has chronicled far-right movements within dysphoria groups, said Hindutva is a superficial politicization of Hinduism. While I disagree with that, I'd say that Hinduism itself is a political ideology, just like Islam. Its aim, said Zhao, again, I'm probably not saying that right, is to cast Indian society as one that should be for Hindus first and foremost above other religious minorities. Zhao said Hindutva is a modern political ideology that advocates for Hindu supremacy and seeks to transform India, a secular democracy, into an ethno-religious country. Although the supremacist ideology of Hindutva has its roots in Hinduism, there is a debate as to whether the political aspects of the, of the, of the ideology can be separated from its religious and cultural foundation. Many academics argue it is separate. Gopla Krishna, and by the way, I disagree with that. When you read the Hindu scriptures, it explicitly, there's, there's multiple places in the Hindu scriptures that uh, for example, in the Rig Veda or the Bhagavad Gita that call for violence against non-Hindus and atheists and everything else. And, and no, I'm not pro-atheist. I'm going to get that too. I'm not pro-atheist. I'm, I'm an ex-atheist. I've left the, or I'll say it this way, the Lord Jesus Christ saved me out of the sci-fi death cult of atheism. I'm not in any way pro-atheism, but I don't advocate for killing atheists like the uh, Rig Veda and Bhagavad Gita does. You read all through it. Uh, it's insane. So I'd argue that the Hindu is perfectly in line with the Hindu religion. It's one and the same, but I'm probably going to be getting a hate speech strike for that too, because, you know, people's uh, feelings matter more than facts, apparently. Uh, uh, Gopala Krishna, director of the Dara Palakadas, again, I'm probably not saying that right, a self-described Hindu advocacy group in the greater Toronto area said Canadians don't understand Hinduism, and they're presently, they're presently getting their perspective from non-Hindu religions, taking to and talking down to Hinduism. Well, I would say that, you know, the Muslims would, would give the same response. Oh, you just don't understand Islam. Well, I've, again, I've read the Quran and I know what it says. And I'm pretty much well, well aware of what Islam does. And what, what the world saw with ISIS and Al-Qaeda and, and Taliban, that was Islam, pretty much. That was Islam for you. And what the world's seen with the Hindu, that's Hinduism. 
So, yeah, those Hindu trolls are harassing Canadian academics for criticizing Hindu extremism. Right here in Canada, not, not over in India, here in Canada. That's the fruit of Hinduism for you. That's simple. So, just wanted to point that out. Uh, don't be deceived by anyone who says that, oh, it's a peaceful, pluralistic religion. It's not. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.